I think maybe you can also provide some commentary or questions. And Dr. Glenn David is one of our partners, and we'll ask him to introduce uh, his team here and hey, what we're going to do. Um, uh, Dr. Gavin Nixit, our fellow here at Swedish Neuroscience Institute, doing an international uh, spine fellowship. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, some of the uh, techniques used for kyphoplasty, as well as going over uh, the uh, tumor ablation product and approach uh, with uh, some of the products we have uh, that are new or upcoming with the uh, uh, Striker uh, module. And today we're using some of the products uh, in cement. Uh, support of uh, Globus uh, Cement here. And uh, uh, we're looking at, uh, uh, for those patients that uh, have some uh, painful uh, uh, spine metastases, an uh, uh, alternative is to uh, help uh, get out those lesions. Uh, and here we have uh, some of the devices here uh, using our radio frequency ablation technology. We have a lesion partially done with the, uh, a 15 milliliter uh, and 20 millimeter um, uh, RF or radio frequency uh, probe. Uh, some of the uh, information and uh, actual, uh, we can get the actual probe itself and show that the, it has a micro infuser to actually help cool the actual distal end of the probe. Uh, proximally and distally at the actual probe uh, area and uh, at 0.13 cc's of uh, fluid per minute helps to cool down that actual probe so that you're getting uh, less charring occurring but also uh, helps with the impedance. Uh, you're able to provide four ablations at one time, so two levels. Right now we can see the actual ablation zone increasing as we speak. Uh, if you're having t two actual probes at one time, we're having a, an actual, actual elliptoid burn occurring up to uh, 12, 20 millimeters across and, uh, and depth-wise at 31 millimeters. So a good option to help get up those t uh, bony uh, metastases uh, that are painful for the patient, uh, then move on to uh, helping provide some stability and structure uh, with the uh, cement and kyphoplasty. Okay. As you can see, the zone slowly but surely increasing uh, as we speak in this uh, gelatinous demonstration. Hey, Glenn, it's Amir here. Um, just wanted to, to hear a little bit about um, what are uh, what's the typical patient that gets referred to you for this type of intervention? So I, I can't uh, quite hear in the lab here uh, your question, Amir, sorry. Let's see. How, how about now? Yep. yep. Yeah, I can hear you better now. Go ahead. I just wanted you to, to briefly speak on uh, what's the kind of typical patient that gets referred to you for this kind of intervention? Yeah. A typical patient is a patient having uh, maybe undergone or Prior to uh, some radiation, uh, they're having severe, significant bony metastases. Uh, a lesion is quite a large lesion, uh, encompassing a lot of the actual uh, um, material body, or a, a very small piece of area that found that very tender to percussion over that area. Uh, targeting the area specifically uh, with either doing one side or doing both sides. Uh, but finally, the patient is quite painful from the actual uh, lesion itself. Uh, it may be a patient who has undergone, undergone radiation or, or not, uh, and working with the radiation oncologist uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we're getting adequate treatment for that actual uh, tumor, uh, and then providing some kyphoplasty uh, product uh, to help stabilize the actual fracture. Great, thank you. So, uh, in terms of the, uh, we're going to some of the more of the uh, kyphoplasty versus vertebral plasty. I know, like you know, you know in favor of, uh, we're more in favor of having undergo a more kyphoplasty procedure. Uh, there's quite a bit of a um, cement leakage occurring with uh, uh, vertebral plasty, where you're just placing the uh, needle into the vertebral body uh, without creating any uh, cavity or uh, uh, any uh, 
to subtract for the cement to go to. So uh, does the geoplasty have uh, some level of uh, room to, and usage? Uh, maybe for those patients where the uh, fracture is so severe that you're not able to create any significant cavity, uh, but in, in even those patients where um, the uh, bone is quite, uh, quite soft, so that you're able to get into the area quite easily uh, just using uh, the needle. But in most part, uh, we're in favor we're mainly using uh, pegoplasty type of procedure because of the high uh, significant uh, uh, rate of leakage occurring with pegoplasty type of uh, approach. Uh, here, uh, Gavin has uh, started uh, uh, the kyphoplasty procedure. Uh, if we were to do a tumor ablation type of scenario, we would, and the tumor was encompassing majority of the teal body, then we'd use this uh, bipedicular approach. Uh, this is kind of a traditional approach that uh, you'd use in an AP type of uh, view. Of course, sharpened on the uh, actual uh, radiological view, uh, and the C-arm view, if you could pan to that. As we can see, we've moved, in the most part uh, sharpened up the end plates. Uh, looking here at the L4 level, uh, Dr. Nixon has uh, got into the, on the right side, halfway through the pedicle there, so, and, and started getting into the pedicle on the left side. We usually, in most parts, start at the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock approach in this AP view. Uh, and if we look at the other view of the lateral, you know, you can see that the going way halfway through the pedicle on the AP view, we should be halfway through the pedicle on the lateral view. As you can see, the, uh, Julie, our radiology tech, has nicely uh, um, sharpened up the end plate, then got a true, a true lateral. Uh, so it's kind of a nice view of how it, the picture should be and help keep yourself safe in, uh, in doing this procedure itself. I uh, see the, the uh, more uh, proximal uh, um, jam sheety is just entering the pedicle and corresponding to the uh, pedicle on the left side. And Dr. Nixon's gonna go ahead and uh, uh, enter uh, into the pedicle. Uh, let's go maybe go now to the uh, lateral view. Let me tap. Yeah. Let's go lateral. But going from AP lateral view, checking intermittently, of course, uh, we want to make sure we're not crossing that uh, medial border of the pedicle too early, uh, making sure that we are not crossing that medial border uh, before we actually enter the actual vertebral body. Okay. So Glenn, as you're uh, placing these uh, gem sheeties, um, I know there are times when um, there are patients we have that may be poor surgical candidates, yeah. um, to, and uh, we're trying to get them a little bit of pain control. Um, is there a situation in terms of there being too much tumor burden or, uh, you know, osteolysis that you, you feel like you get a little bit nervous? Or where is that kind of line when uh, we want to avoid uh, kyphoplasty type procedure? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, in terms of uh, and the um, burns itself, uh, it helps to really, really plan out the size of the burn by 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 making sure you're staying within the ablation zones of the actual probe that you're using uh, and helping plan out where that uh, tumor is uh, and so you're adequately getting after it without uh, for, um, putting the patient at risk, of course. Uh, you're looking at making sure that, that the lesion's too proximal, maybe you want to stay away from that, uh, too proximal to the spinal canal, making sure you maybe want to stay away from that type of uh, uh, lesion uh, and making sure that the, the ablation zone doesn't come anywhere close to the spinal canal. But the, there's um, actual, uh, uh, no, noted actual uh, ablation zones created by the actual probes that are known. And so we're using that to make sure we're planning these out uh, um, well and making sure that the actual uh, probe itself doesn't go beyond the area that we're trying to plan for. 
yeah, so it's adequate planning, uh, making sure that uh, the, uh, the actual area itself uh, is a decent size uh, and able to uh, withstand ablation zone without causing significant problems to the patient. Okay. So you're halfway through here. Um, I think we're close there. So halfway on both sides, uh, on the right side, coming a little more towards the medial line. Let's go up to the medial line and see where we're at. Go to Dr. Nixon. Back to there. I see Dr. Nixon is mainly trying to aim towards the, the opposite corner diagonally. Sure. Picture. He's using the uh, picture bevel device uh, to help uh, provide a little more uh, direction to his uh, Shamshidi. Picture. Picture. As you see, he's getting closer to that medial line. I'll get up to the medial line on the other side. Picture. 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 Great. It's up to that medial line. Let's go now to the lateral and see where we're at. If you want to pan back to the uh, table where the uh, uh, radio frequency ablation is at, and see now we're encompassing pretty much a large amount of the vertebral body uh, for those areas where you're having a, quite a large tumor lesion within the body itself. So one side. So about to enter on one side. The other side, I can see, uh, is not uh, is maybe going going halfway through. So uh, which means we're a little too medial on the one side uh, itself. I think this is the deep one yeah. here. A little live. And that's the uh, left side where we're at the correct area. Okay. And this one needs some correction on the right side. But let's, oh, me. let's enter with the left side itself. Keep it up. Picture. 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 <clears throat> Picture. Close up. Let's back up a little bit. This is where some possible adjustments need to take place. Lateral picture. Picture, picture here. Picture here. So you, gotta, you want to stay a little more up within the medial portion of the actual vertebral body. Where's the double tip? Got a bevel oh, up here. Where's bevel the tip? Bevel tip. Bevel tip. Oh, thank you. And picture there. We'll see a little higher and help provide some direction. A little more so. Get it one third into the body itself. And we're ready for the cement mixture. So our Globus product, we can pan to the some of the products for our Globus cement here. It mixes within one minute of the actual, uh, uh, for the cement itself. Uh, working time in total is approximately 17 minutes, but uh, we've had some cement already to go here, but we're gonna use their balloon, uh, their 15 millimeter balloon uh, to get in and create a nice cavity into the actual device, in, into the material body. And before we do that, we're gonna need, first of all, of course, my bad, is to get the drill. This is where uh, we drill it out, uh, Amir, and then we would actually uh, or provide a, a sample and core it out, drill it out, and then actually provide the RF uh, tumor ablation device, create the uh, uh, tumor ablation uh, zones, and then take that probe out, and then we would actually insert the balloon, and then, uh, uh, and then inject the uh, silicone cement, uh, polymethyl methacrylate, sorry. Picture there. 
Picture. 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 Picture there. Back it up a little bit. No, no, leave it in. No. So, in terms of actually how we'd actually plan it out as well, and how large of a lesion uh, we would burn, uh, using the drill, there are actually markers within the drill to help measure the actual uh, device itself. Regan, get the actual uh, um, needle, show the, the audience the, the actual uh, size per drill we'd use for the, how to size out the probe. Thanks. So you can see it's color coded more towards the proximal end. Blue would be more the uh, 50 millimeter balloon, and at the orange end, or the uh, 20 millimeter balloon. Uh, for, sorry, forgive me, the uh, uh, 15 millimeter uh, RF probe uh, versus the uh, 20 millimeter uh, RF probe that's used to help size uh, the actual lesion created. Place that in. Lateral there, picture. 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 Get them out there, picture. Picture. Okay, so, so that's about a 15 millimeter uh, RF Pro would be used, and then do the ablation itself. Uh, we've corded out now with the drill, so then we go on to actually the uh, inserting our 15 millimeter balloon. Picture there. Picture. Picture. Right. Let's first of all also take a picture. Uh, I just want to check the AP view. Thanks, Julie. Okay. Excellent. That's nice. View of the uh, lateral, la uh, AP view of the actual balloon. Let's go to lateral now. Picture there. And open up the wag for me. We're just in the wag to help sharpen that end plate view. Let's go a little more south. Picture there. And picture there. Great. Lock it. Oh, it's live for me. Good. There. Lock it there for me, please. And then we'll go ahead and inflate that balloon. Picture. Picture. Picture, picture, picture. There, it starts to inflate. Picture starting to inflate now. Go ahead and pan over to the. Actually, thank you. Picture, 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 picture. Is there a point that we uh, are ever concerned that we're displacing tumor into the canal with this? Is there a, um, you really want to look at the kind of back wall of the vertebral body to see if this would be a, a safe procedure or not? Yeah, you know, I, I look at that, especially in, in those tumors, especially when they are very proximal to the canal. Uh, and we kind of stay away from those types of uh, uh, tumors in, itself. Uh, and making sure that we're staying away from uh, any compromise of the canal and pushing that tumor 
uh, into the canal itself. So it really, it's mainly the, where it, uh, the actual uh, tumor uh, is, especially uh, Amir, uh, is where I really kind of make sure that that is, uh, is uh, done very cautiously. And if anything close to the canal, we're staying away from. But, but in terms of more distal ones, uh, of pushing the um, more distal ones um, uh, away uh, into the canal, I'm not really afraid of that happening uh, itself. And let's fill the balloon there. What's it at now? 227. 227, okay. Pressure wise, but mill wise. So the, the balloon itself holds about five cc's of actual fluid. Put in three. Okay. And deflated when we use the cement. How much time in the cement so far? What's the uh, time on that cement? That's fine. Yeah, so we're about 17, mil, 17 minutes on this cement itself. And I like my cement quite more, a little more rubbery, uh, less shine to it. Uh, doesn't stick to your glove. Uh, high viscosity. Uh, this is about the right setup time for the way I like it uh, and keeping my patient safe to prevent any significant leakage occurring. Do you have anyone to go ahead? Okay. Picture there. Picture there. Push through. Picture. Picture. And we have a slide for some different cements that are available. Picture. Uh, if you look at our Fortress uh, Globus product here, uh, setting time of five to 10 minutes. Uh, working time, in this case, uh, we're looking at already 17 minutes and it's, it's looking, working very well still. Uh, but quite a high viscosity cement um, and some of the other ones that, uh, that, we, that are used uh, uh, more favorably uh, with high viscosity itself. Um, a striker one is, setup time is also a minute time, but uh, working time is also about 18 minutes itself. Uh, but a nice uh, viscosity, and I prefer the higher viscosity cements as compared to low viscosity, less leakage. Um, uh, and really, I can't stress the, enough the importance of making sure that the cement uh, is actually an adequate uh, viscosity before you put it in. Um, but Gavin, go ahead and inject and see it fill the uh, picture. Left side of the body here. Go ahead. Picture. 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 As you see, the uh, cement interdigitating to the teal body. Picture. Picture. And most part, uh, I'm injecting under a lateral view, but let's check it intermittently checking a, an AP view just to see where we're at, making sure we're not coming out the side. Okay, quite a bit more you can put in. Okay. Picture. Great. Let's go back to the lateral view. Thanks, Julie. All right. So we would fill as much as possible, making stay away from the uh, superior and inferior end plates, staying away from the anterior border, uh, wanting that cement to fill um, anterior to posterior and overall. And injecting in that cement uh, more distally. Push, it, push it in further. Yeah. So it's starting to set up already. Yeah. Picture. 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 A little bit beyond the uh, working time now of the actual cement. Picture. Dr. Nixon's putting his muscle into it. <laughs> Getting a little bit of a workout here. Let Picture. me know you want me to take over. <laughs> Picture. Picture. Nice. I think you guys get the gist of it, though. But yeah, um, so I know uh, these patients are looking for a tumor ablation. Uh, we're looking at the uh, adequate patient or patient with more, more bony, uh, painful mets, uh, not uh, improving after uh, uh, radi uh, radiation or prior to the radiation being done, uh, and then helping making sure you're stabilizing that vertebral body. 
uh, could be quite helpful to the patient itself. Amir, any other questions for us? Concerns? No, that was a great demonstration. Really appreciate it. Um, Dr. Mendel, any, uh, any additional comments? Yeah, I'm curious to know what are your, who makes the call as to the need for uh, ablation versus no ablation on the case? Is it you that makes the call? Is it the, yeah, um, the, in conjunction with the radiation oncologist a lot of times, as well as uh, uh, our uh, spine uh, tumor uh, surgeons, uh, uh, Dr. Skuin, Dr. Chapman, uh, and looking out for the uh, appropriate patient. But, you know, collaboration, uh, Dr. Mandela, I think is, is, is the best way to, to help these patients um, where you think that the, the uh, actual uh, um, uh, case is, uh, is, uh, is where the patient can be helped. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chapman and I have had uh, shared patients and, and collaborated on patients uh, where uh, uh, this type of... Uh, um, Institute and the Seattle Science Foundation. Sorry, a little background. I think it's never but anyways, uh, in collaborating with the uh, uh, our spine tumor uh, surgeons as well as uh, uh, radiation oncologists uh, to help uh, uh, choose these patients, uh, yeah, I think it's the best way. Yeah, I think the you know it's still out there as to the indication for ablation versus radiation, right? And so I'm sure, still not yeah. sure if it's a procedure <laughs> looking for indication or indication looking for procedure. Yeah. It's always come up as to ablation versus radiosurgery, conventional radiation, and those things, in my mind, are not that clear yeah. yet. Uh, also, I've had uh, cases where the patient does not want to undergo radiation. Uh, and, uh, and how do we help these patients who uh, palliatively, Dr. Mandel, I think is, is a point to make made as well. Uh, is it adequate to just, uh, just do kyphoplasty on those patients to help stabilize the fracture? Uh, I think certain indications that can be we still help these patients uh, where radiation is not appropriate or, or not wanted uh, in their uh, end of life type of scenarios.